Hi. Now today I want to know what are the dimensions of this iPhone here. So the micrometer I'm going to use to measure the thickness with. And so I place it in there and I work it, I close it up. And I'm going to get a value of 6.76 millimeters plus or minus 0 0.005. Well, this micrometer clearly allows me great precision in measuring the thickness over here. So what's a micrometer? Well, today I'm going to discuss how you might use the micrometer to measure distances that are in the small range, up to 25 mil. So stay tuned. I want to know what are the dimensions of this iPhone here. And obviously, a good instrument to use is a ruler. So I measure the dimensions, and if I measure across, I'm going to get a value of around 67, maybe 68. So my value is going to be around 67.5 plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. Now, what about the length? I do the same thing, of course. I line it up as best as I can, and I'm going to get a value as 138.5 plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. Now, what about the thickness? In this case, I'm going to say it's around 6, around 7, maybe 7, but I'm maybe out by 0.5. So let's say it's 6.5 plus or minus 0.5 millimetres. Now in the first two situations, that uncertainty of 0.5 is actually a really small proportion of the actual measurements. In this case, it's much more significant. So I actually don't think this is a good tool to use to work out the thickness. So here comes the micrometer. So a micrometer basically is a measuring device. It is a glorified ruler. It's designed to measure small distances to a much greater precision. So your ruler will have a precision of about half a millimeter. In other words, you can somehow predict it's between one or two millimeters, but that's about as far as you can go. In this case, my micrometer allows me much greater precision, in fact, into hundredths of a millimeter in terms of its precision. But how does it work? Well, let's before discussing that, let's talk about the parts of my micrometer. Of course, it has this classic shape that looks like a B from your perspective, or a D or a P or whatever. But let's go through the parts. Here we have the anvil and the spindle, which is the place where you put the object that you're measuring. You then also have the sleeve here, which has these gradations on the top here, which spin around as it moves across. And then lastly, we have what we refer to as the ratchet. And that basically means that if you turn by the ratchet, you can't overseize this end because you start to get a ratcheting sound, which basically stops it from turning any further. And so in essence, this uh, sleeve spins multiple times as it gets closer and closer and closer. So how do we use that to measure? Well, the first thing to look at is what the gradations actually do. If I start to turn this, you can see that my anvil and my spindle are opening up. If I turn this completely one loop, I actually move only 50 gradations on this side. And over here, you'll see that there's a beginning of a line appearing. And that line is representing half a millimeter. So can you see what happens? So in other words, this 50 represents 50 one hundredths of a millimeter. So in other words, each of these gradations is actually one hundredth of a millimeter. If I spin it around another complete turn like so, I've now spun it around twice. This is now opened up by one millimeter, and you'll see, if you look carefully enough, you'll see the one millimeter line division. And in fact, if I open it up multiple times, like so, you see that in there, I have both the millimeter gradations at the bottom of the center line, and the half millimeter gradations at the top of that center line. So you can see what's going on here. If I spin this around twice, I have a hundred of these gradations going past, but I only move one millimeter to the side here. We use those two principles to determine the actual size. So how do we use it? Well, before we start, we need to make sure it's calibrated. That is, when it's completely closed, it is actually sitting on zero. So if I close this up like so, you'll see that the reading here is on zero, but if this was sitting, let's say, in this position like so, when it's completely closed, then that means I'm actually out by one hundredth of a millimeter. And so I need to factor that into my calculations. If, of course, if it's sitting like so, then 
similarly, we have to calculate that into our calculations. So therefore, we have to add or subtract that particular difference into our final result. But our micrometer, if I close on the ratchet and it's designed to go click, 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 um, when it's completely closed, so you're not actually seizing it up, you'll see that it is sitting on zero. So before we start, let's practice two examples how we use the micrometer to work out the thickness. So here's our first example. You'll see here that we start with our zero line and we've got one millimeter and we've got two millimeters, so we're over two millimeters. Of course, the lines at the top represent the half millimeter positions, but you can see we haven't got another half coming here. So this is definitely under two and a half mil. So we've got two millimeters plus the 0.35, remember they're hundredths of a millimeter each. So as a result, we've got 2.35 millimeters in this example. Let's have a look at our next example. So I have obviously one millimeter, two millimeters, but I have an extra half here. This is spun around twice. So I already have 2.5 millimeters. But then what we have here is 35, 36 and 37. So either we've got the 0.36 or the 0.37. So the two values really that we have on either side of our line here is 2.86 millimeters or 2.87 millimeters. But because we have somewhere in between, the best way to write this is to say, look, it's somewhere in between there, but we have an uncertainty of half of this space in between. So the best way to write this is to say, look, I've got 2.865 plus or minus 0 0.005 on either side millimeters. Now let's use this to measure the thickness of my phone. I need to make sure that this is nice and wide and open to allow my phone to slot in or whatever you're measuring. I'm gonna place this in like so, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the sleeve here and I'm going to allow it to be not super tight, just so that it's a little flush but I'm taking caution that I'm not over tightening it. Then what I'm gonna do is on the last few turns, I'm going to use the ratchet. Now, what will happen is, is that if I set this correct, then basically it's at its tightest point. Now what I can do is I can read this off. And again, I'm going to go across my readings over here and you'll see I could take the phone out in this case and leave it in here. You can use the lock if you wanna lock it into place and you'll see that I have the value of five, I have the value of six, because you can see the next gradation, and then you see one of the halfway gradations. So I know that the value is not six, but actually 6.5 plus. Now how much plus? Well, that's where this aspect comes in, and you'll see it's sitting currently on 44. And that means 44 hundredths plus my 6.5. So that gives me a grand total of 6.94 millimeters. Now, if I look very closely, it's sitting pretty on the line, but obviously if it's sort of above or below one of the lines, you may have to mention a small uncertainty. In this case, that uncertainty is 0.005 plus or minus. So I hope that has helped you understand how to use the micrometer to measure thicknesses up to 25 mils to a much greater precision than you would have with a ruler. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care. Bye for now.